What's happening, guys? Keith here with your October 6th edition of the Impact Report. So if you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 190,000 viewers and ranked 136 on Cable's Top 150. This is down 14% from last week's 222,000 viewers. So moving over to Impact's YouTube page, normally I upload this on Sunday, so that is when I take my data is Sunday morning. However, I took it from Saturday morning. And number three, Petey Williams teaches Scarlet Bordeaux the Canadian Destroyer. This had 37,000 views. Number two, Austin Aries spits venom at Johnny Impact on the mic, 52,000 views. And number one, Sammy Callahan and OVE vs. Brian Cage and the Lucha Bros. That one had 65,000 views. Um, so it looks like Austin Aries and Johnny Impact have had a back and forth on Twitter. And uh, Aries seems to be making things a little personal. Um, it seems like some of the fans weren't too happy with this back and forth, or I should say where it ended up going. Uh, so I'll give you guys a rundown of kind of what was going on. So originally, uh, Impact Wrestling had posted what Aries had said on Thursday with him saying, Who are you this week? Johnny Nitro? Johnny Mundo? You going to be Johnny Survivor? Um, and then Johnny Impact wrote back. He said, All you got to do is give him a microphone and he buries himself. Aries then responded, Yes, buried in truth, steeped in arrogance, fueled by passion. And I generously spit it all over you and this Impact Wrestling World title match. In the 10 minutes given the mic, I did what you haven't been able to do in 16 years. Make fans actually care about your match. Uh, Johnny responded, Ha ha ha, love that you think that. It's so far off base, I can't even be mad at your delusion. You think you are the only reason people care about our match? You're entitled to your opinion, but saying it doesn't make it true. And then Impact Wrestling posted... A sign of things to come at Bound for Glory as Johnny Impact stands tall over Austin Aries. And this is where it takes a turn. So Johnny wrote, when does anyone not stand tall over Austin Aries? And then Aries responds with, ah, the form of discrimination that's still super cool. Short shaming. If I joked race, retards, your gay look. If I fat shamed your husky wife, instant outrage. But you can predictably cut on me over my height. Genetics I don't control, and it's just funny. Yeah, people were not too happy about that tweet. Um, and the worst part is, I, I guess once people saw that Aries said something about Taya, they felt that they needed to say something about Taya. So then Taya had to defend herself against people. Morrison responded back to the tweet. He said, I don't know what's more inappropriate. Your homophobic shot at my tights or you fat shaming a woman who trains every day like an athlete. But I know what pisses me off. You insulting my wife. Congrats, bro. You took my mind off the title. All I want to do now is F you up. Um, and that was last night he had posted that. Aries did respond this morning. Uh, he said, homophobic? Is looking gay an awful thing? I personally like the flamboyant look. I wish I could pull it off. Just last week, I dressed up and performed one of my favorites, Elton John, at a piano bar. Also, it wasn't aimed specifically at just your tights. Lastly, you can try. So, like I said, fans weren't too happy over this. It seems like a lot of people don't know where the lines are blurred between kayfabe and real talk, I guess. Um, I don't know what you guys think about the whole thing. I mean, it's just, they're trying, they're trying to push the envelope by being edgy, but I don't know if this is necessarily the right path to take with it. Um, hopefully it doesn't sour anybody on anything impact related, but anyway, while we're on the subject of Taya, she has been granted permanent U.S. residency. Uh, this was rumored to be the reason she wasn't able to go to Canada last year for Bound for Glory, as there was fear of her having issues re-entering the U.S. I'm sure this is part of the reason we haven't seen her since the tapings in Florida after Redemption, because they were all outside of the U.S. So hopefully we will see more of Taya in the future. Uh, so Homicide was recently interviewed by the Serious Lowdown, and here are some highlights that WrestleZone had posted about. 
Um, Homicide was asked on the evolution of the X division. He says, I think it's more aggressive, to be honest with you. We have a very hungry division of wrestlers, and the future is bright, I'd say. He talks about the formation of LAX. He says, I was in Brooklyn, New York, and Conan gave me a call and told me, hey, man, I'm doing something new called the LAX for this company called TNA Wrestling. I'll always remember December 29, 2005, when they flew me all the way to Orlando, Florida. Basically, I was talking to Conan, and he gave me all the details and was telling me the way it was going to be. I was this thug guy, and Conan was this legend from WCW. It was about giving Latinos the respect they deserve in pro wrestling. So what we did is we knocked and hit on the door until we earned our respect and let the world know it was our time. Uh He was talking about the impact in WWE meeting. He says, The big time is going to come, and I was telling my crew, we need the magic feeling. Even though I am a professional worker, I am still the fan, and I love magic. It's like, you never know what's going to happen until it happens. It's something that's going to come, and you're going to enjoy it. So that is interesting. And then he comments on Abyss going into the Impact Hall of Fame. He says, I'm so proud of that dude. He deserves it. I met that man in Puerto Rico, and it was crazy because there was a riot, and it was the first time we met. After that, we went to TNA, and he was one of the hardest workers, not only in pro wrestling, but for the company. He is a very loyal person. Very true words about Abyss. Um, So Brian Cage recently spoke with Wrestling Inc. He was promoting Bound for Glory, and here's what he had to say. Um, He talks about the match, the six-man tag that he's going to be in or his expectations for the match, he said, we're going to get our stuff in, we're going to own the spotlight, we're going to steal the night and have the match of the night, of course. With an OVE rules match, whether you like them or not, their six-man tag matches are unbelievable. Like, their worst one is probably the best six-man tag you've ever seen. So I expect nothing but the same except for the fact that we're going to be in it. We're going to own the show, steal the spotlight, and have the match of the night. You're going to see a couple of new things that you haven't seen yet from me, and maybe as well from the Lucha Brothers. But if it's, but it's all going to be a hell of a ride, and I expect us to get our hands raised high as the winners, and more importantly, reiterating having the match of the night. Um, he's asked on which wrestlers he looked up to growing up. He says, when I was younger, I was a big fan of Raven and WCW. The whole Raven's rule stuff, he was probably one of my favorite guys to play with on the WCW Revenge game as well. I've always liked his stuff. I was a skateboarder at the time, but he just had an interesting appeal. He did things differently, like the way he would sit in the corner and cut his artistically vibed promos. He was just unique, and I liked the matches with Raven's Rules. I also transitioned to liking Canyon, so so much that him, Canon, DDP, and Saturn. The whole feud was one of my favorite things about WCW. And then he was asked about not defending the X Division title at Bound for Glory, He says, I'm happy being in the match I'm in. I think it will definitely have a lot of eyes on it and do well. But yeah, there's a little bit of being the X Division champion. I've said I wanted to redefine the X Division, which I feel that I've been doing and making it the Weapon X Division. Everyone keeps asking about Option C, and I want to make the world title exactly that. Option C, because I have Option A. So not being able to defend it at Bound for Glory, it does hurt. I actually thought I would be able to defend it more leading up to Bound for Glory, and I haven't gotten the opportunity to do so. It's a little like, oh man, come on. But I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing, and I believe there will be plenty of people lining up and waiting for opportunities after OVE. So I'll get my title defenses under my belt one way or another. Um, And then we had the Impact Wrestling press pass this week with Eddie Edwards and Moose. Uh, Most of this was them hyping up their match at Bound for Glory. So at the beginning of the call, uh, Moose says that he's driving and on the call at the same time, and he asks if anybody hears that noise, and it's the noise is from him not wearing the seatbelt, and he's letting that annou- annoying sound play because he hates them. Uh, Moose was in full heel mode there. Um, this it, it was really good. I, I enjoyed this call. It was very entertaining. Um, it's just a shame that it doesn't get more views, I guess, um, because I think it had about seven or 8,000. And there was a point, which I'll get to later, which he talks about what's going to happen on Impact, you know, making it personal between him and Eddie and his family. So I feel like that definitely played, it plays a part in helping build up the show the next day or the same day, depending on when they record it. But 
Oh, well. Uh, so he's, Eddie says that he wasn't able to visit Moose because he was strapped down five doors down after his match at Slammiversary. Moose says after he whips Eddie Edwards' ass, he's going to kick Ross's ass and Josh's ass. Like I said, he was in full heel mode. Uh, at this point, Moose is told to knock off the cursing or else he will be disconnected from the call. Uh, Moose says that Eddie only cares about Kenny, and Kenny and Eddie says there was a one time where Kenny was the only one by his side. Uh, Moose says he has something in store for Eddie tomorrow on Impact, which involves his family. That's what I was talking about. Um, they're asked about a lot more travel this year compared to last year. Eddie says it's been great, and he's very proud of the product they've been putting out, and Moose says it has been great for the company. Uh, they are asked if Bound for Glory will top Slammiversary, Eddie says, we always want to top what we've done. He says, no doubt. He says, him beating Moose will make it the best show of the year. Moose says he's going to have a special entrance at Bound for Glory, which is going to be better than anything he's ever done before. He may even have Alicia walk him down. Uh, Eddie is asked about if he has any interest going back to the tag division. He says he has a problem picking quality friends and partners, but he says he will do whatever his career calls him to do. If it's being in a tag team, then he will do that. Moose is asked if he plans on going after the world title. He says if Johnny Impact is lucky enough to win the championship, then Moose will go after it. He's not breaking up what they have now with Aries. Uh, they are asked what they took away from tagging with each other and what and if they will use that at their match at Bound for Glory. Moose says he knows Eddie like the back of his hand. Bound for Glory is going to be an easy night for him. Eddie says to Moose, Heavy, or he says, Moose has never lived inside my head, so he has no idea what's going to happen. Um, especially since he's become unhinged, which there are little parts throughout the whole thing where Eddie was just being ridiculous about things, calling Moose an idiot and stupid. and just, it, Like I said, it was overall a really good call if you guys get a chance to check it out. Uh, then Moose says that he's going to break Kenny in half and throw it in the trash. Uh, they're asked about the atmosphere what it's going to be like at Bound for Glory. Moose says he has wrestled in New York before, and he always brings out his best matches at Bound for Glory. Uh, Eddie says that he has a lot of history in New York, winning a Ring of Honor title there, or the Ring of Honor title, and him and Davey have wrestled the Hardys there and the Hardys and Dudleys. They're asked if anyone from their recent trip to the UK impressed them and if they'd like to see them in an impact ring. Uh, Moose says absolutely not, and Eddie says Justin Sizem, who he had tagged with, he says they could take that tag team on the road. Uh, Moose is asked about how he has changed to the way he is dressed and who his style icon is, and he was offended by this, and he said he creates his own style. Uh, Moose is asked if he had if he made any adjustments going from being by himself to being in a stable, Moose says no. Eddie says Moose needed adjustments on the child seat in the back of the car. This got a good laugh out of me. Uh, Eddie is asked about going from a tag team to a singles wrestler. He says he gets to challenge himself to do new things as a singles wrestler. Uh, Eddie is asked how he is going to prepare himself in case there is some outside interference and if there is any chance we see Davey Richards back in Impact. Uh, Eddie says that he is just going to keep an eye out because he expects Killer Cross and Austin Aries to be nearby. Uh, he says the only time will tell with Davey. He has spoken to him, and you never know in wrestling. Moose is obviously insulted that he, that the person who asked the question thinks he needs Cross or Aries' help to beat Edwards. He says, and he says Davey left Impact because of Eddie Edwards. Uh, Moose is asked about the Grand Championship and his thoughts on the title and it being discontinued. Moose said he just does goes there and does his job and doesn't make decisions. He trusts Aries' decision to get rid of it. And then Josh ends the call by hyping Impact and Bound for Glory. And Moose then says the reason they got rid of the Grand Championship was because of Josh Matthews. So that was pretty funny there. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Um, so tonight... We have the BCW 25th anniversary show, which will serve as an Impact Wrestling one night only at a later date. And tomorrow night, we have the Motown Showdown with uh, Impact Wrestling and Border City Wrestling coming together for a live Twitch special. I believe that goes on at 7 p.m. Eastern time, maybe 8. I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but I'm sure Impact has posted on Twitter the exact time. But um, this is probably going to be a Saturday thing for the next month or so as far as the impact report goes. Maybe something during the week if we have a lot pop up. And I will see you guys back on Friday for my impact review. So 
Until then, thanks for checking out my video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.